Okay, okay, we're back after a, a technical interruption. Not quite sure where we um, left off, but I'll start at the top of this slide and just quickly recap. Um, the, the next design goal was to enable enterprise printing, um, which um, in many cases means server-side UI-less printing, right? So printing of images and, and um, sorry, op operating on images and um, printing are two things that actually very commonly happen in server-side applications which have no, um, no UI. They're just literally running on a server in a data center somewhere. Um, except, you know, maybe they then, and then they spit something out to a printer or in the case of imaging or something, they spit it out over the network or into a database. But, you know, so, so there's graphics stuff going on on servers and um, in order to be able to control that properly as, um, as a server-side application to be able to direct the output to the correct printer for this report or whatever, you need to have some um, APIs. You can't just rely on a user dialogue. So, although FX doesn't have that right now, um, you know, eventually it will and should, should and will. Okay, so, um, but, you know, enterprises often want big reporting packages, so this is just a good point to say that, you know, um, our architects would like us to not kind of go out in that space and do too much of that in the core platform. So, um, you know, I mean, we've learned that in, you know, in the Java space, there are, you know, there are great reporting packages out there, and, um, you know, somebody will eventually fill that gap. Um, other goals, um, <clears throat> so there's some sort of technical uh, issues coming to the surface here. Um, we want to be able to print the content that's on the, on the screen as well as off the screen, by which I mean, you know, often you want to be able to print exactly what's there. You've got some chart or some table or whatever, and you want to be able to just tell it to print, you know, that, that, that table view. Or the, um, in other cases, you know, what you really want to do is just sort of have a, you don't want to print exactly what's on the screen, and this is actually in some ways much more common. You want to be able to um, format the output correctly for the printer, right? So most report printing and so forth, what actually ends up on the printer was never actually anything that was on the screen, right? Um, it's formatted differently and, you know, maybe doesn't use the same colors and so forth and doesn't have all the same um, stuff. Um, in FX um, as well, there are, um, you know, pretty strict threading requirements as well about what you can do on different threads. So, you know, um, there are some challenges in uh, making all of that work, but the goal is that, you know, as much as possible, you know, we want to make it easy for the developer, right? So if you want to, you know, if you want to print something that's on the screen, we'll, we'll make it work. We'll, we'll print it out for you. And if you want to um, um, create, uh, print um, some node hierarchy that you never actually display and you never attach to a scene and a display in a stage, we'll, we'll do that for you too. And, um, you know, we'll run it. If you, if you are on the um, FX application thread, you know, um, um, you know, and you try to do something like, that's where you display user dialogue or something like that or anything like that, we'll try to, or you're trying to print pages on there, we'll try to actually schedule that somewhere else and not block for you. And um, also, since printing is a pretty long-lived kind of thing, right, there is, you know, no requirement, you know, that you do stuff on the UI thread, right? You can create your, you can create nodes and actually call print and something like that on any thread that you want. Um, Right now, there are, you know, as, as I was doing this, there are, there are a number of implementation bugs and deficiencies in the scene graph, right, that, that seem to manifest as layout not working quite correctly um, and that certain things have to happen on, a, on, a, uh, on the FX application thread, even though you're not attached to a, to, a, to a scene or else you get some exception which you should really not have got. Or that layout or something doesn't apply correctly. So, you know, try and work around those. You know, even if you, right now, even if you sort of print on, on you know, your own, you sport, you know, uh, spawn off some worker thread, you try to print. Um, if, to work around those, you should be able to do all of that on that thread. Where we find that it's necessary, we'll just sort of, 
you know, have things that need to run on the, on the FX thread run on that thread for you. And try to make it all as transparent as possible. Um, and you know, keep the API simple and use FX properties, um, which is sort of something that's pretty common through the API. So what are the sort of key parts of um, a printing API, when you think about it this way? Um, well, you want to um, you want to be able to, at least if you're doing server-side printing, right? You certainly want to be able to find all the printers because you um, may want to select from them and choose the one that's most appropriate. And actually, this is all can equally apply if you're doing GUI, uh, you know, a user um, um, doing a user interface where you may want to sort of pick, you know, you 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 want to sort of look through the printers and just make sure that you. The, the printer that they start with is a color printer, not a black and white printer, or something like that. Um, you've got to create create something you know that encapsulates the notion of the the printing job. You've got to be able to uh, configure that in the way that you want based on the um, capabilities of the printer, and um, you potentially want to be able to control and monitor that job. Um, you want to be able to configure you know, the page on which the, the user prints and then, uh, sorry, the implement, API prints. And um, you want to be able to have you on something which actually will handle the rendering of a node or a node hierarchy, i.e. scene graph. So these are the, the concepts here. And let's talk about these more concretely. Okay, so um, at an API level, everything's just in one simple package. JavaFX print. So um, you know, it's not a very complicated API at all to, 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 to learn. Um, um, but you know, when you sort of look at you know look at it, you know, you kind of go, what's important here? Well, there are there are five important classes. And I'll go through each of these. Darn it. Um, and then there are some other interesting classes as well. Uh, most of these are, uh, you know, sort of printing configuration or attributes or settings. And I'll go through those too, but that's the list. I won't bore you with it. Okay, so I mean, the printer job class is the, is the one you want to really look at first. If you just want to, you know, get started with printing, all you've got to do is go find JavaFX print, printer job. Um, it um, has everything you need to print the most basic kind of uh, job. Uh, um, it has method methods to display the you know any of the user dialogues. You want to let the user have a go at configuring um, um, the page setup or configuring the um, which printer to use and stuff like that. And you know it, it has the methods you need to initiate printing. And pretty much it's all you really need to know about in the um, most simple case. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I think a, a moderate number of app, you know printing applications could get by with just that class. There's there's a couple of other things you do need to do really, but that's the key one. So, what does it look like? Well, it's actually really really simple. I mean, this you cannot get much simpler than this. Um, there's a static method. You just create a printer job. Um, you print. Your node, now this doesn't have to be a single node per se, right? This is, could be a group or something else, some node hierarchy, which basically represents an entire scene graph, which basically then is drawn to the page. And so the concept is that essentially each page is like a scene graph, right? Um, and then you call end job. Dang it. Um, of course, you know, it's, um, that was sort of assuming everything worked. Really, if you were writing production code, it would look more like that. Um, so the, the static factory method could return null if you're on a system with didn't have any printers installed. So you should check for that. Um, if, if for some obscure reason there was an error occurred while you were printing a particular page, we'd return you know false from that method, and you could say, "Oops, problem, bail." And then. When we, you're finally done with the job, we also return the status of, of what happened when we actually pushed it to the, to the spooling system. So you know, it's very simple, right? You know, you, you just got to just check that succeed, that succeed, that succeed, okay. Um, 
So there, uh, you know, I hadn't actually um, done anything there to, to bring the user into the picture in the previous slides. Um, it didn't ask them, the user saw nothing. It just, something just came out on the printer, right? Um, but if you want to bring the user into the picture, um, very simply you call um, a show print dialog method and the null parameter there is just is a, is a window which is meant to be the owner of the um, uh, dialog such that you, know, you, you will block input to that window. So it's what you want to be modal with respect to. And um, <clears throat> that, may, you know, that will, it also should not go behind and so forth. So you should not be able to lose your, your print dialog behind your application. There's a companion method, which I don't show here, called show page setup dialog. And so these are pretty typical on, you know, most platforms, right? I mean, if, and um, no, map well to what's there. Come on. Just you know, should be return false or something. On the green line, should return boolean. So that's... Uh, um, yes, that... that um, What were you? If it, if we oh the idea is that if it returns false, that's basically the user cancelled the dialogue. Is that what you meant? Well, it says boolean do print should return boolean. Oh yes, it does. Yeah, return the boolean. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Yeah, you know what? Um, I guess I edited that in and um, didn't. Yes, thank you. I will fix that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I um, disclaimer. I mean, you know, I've tried to make this as thorough as possible, but I, I, I haven't actually reviewed these slides with anyone else yet. So, <laughs> so you guys. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. Um, so, okay. Then there's the printer. Um, class. So, you know, very simply this represents, you know, what's a, usually the printer you see in your menu, or it could represent something that's some kind of print service, depending on how, anything that the platform basically wants to, can ex will expose to us as if it's a printer will appear, you know, in our list of printers. So, for example, I mean, you know, and, and, you know, it's a standard thing on, on Windows Vista and 7. You have this Microsoft document writer, which it outputs their XPS sort of PDF competitor format. And it's always, always there on the print menu. You know, we, we will, when, if you ask us what are the printers, we'll list that just like the API does with anything else. To us, it looks like a printer. You know, why would we do anything else? Um, so the printer class basically has two somewhat interesting methods. You can get the default printer, and you can get um, all the printers on the system. And this is an observable set, which might, you know, you wonder why. Well, you know, theoretically, right, somebody could add a new printer while you were um, running the application. Um, so it can change. And so also means theoretically the values of these, both, both the values of both of these methods could change from time to time. Unlikely. It Realistically, um, but possible. <coughs> um, <coughs> printer attributes. So this describes the. Um, I need to get some water. Sorry. <coughs> the um, different capabilities of a printer. Um, and. Um, <coughs> You know, for, for each of the attributes, we generally will have a value that says, what is the default or initial value? A, a method which says, what's the default or initial value? And a method which says, what are the possible supported um, values? So, you know, and a concrete example would be that <coughs> very typically the default paper size in, you know, printers here in the U.S. is, is letter, right? But, you know, most printers support like 10, 15, 20 different, you know, so you could get all of them. Um, um, and um, these are, of course, sort of, this whole thing is read-only. So, so this, this pretty much just has getter methods. There's no property or anything like that to listen to or anything. This, this is basically um, a static. Um, now, as a general comment, um, 
but printer attributes. Not everything is visible even to platform APIs. So you know you can you know if you go into um, your you know a Windows dialog and then you bring up printer dialog and then you bring up the printer property sheet and you kind of go down and you select some option um, and you know you may I don't know whatever it is something to do with you know color you know color quality or something depending on how they express it but. You know, there, there are um, a ton of possibilities, and they aren't necessarily even expressed through API, right? All that happens on, say, on Windows is there's a completely opaque data structure which lives within, which is managed by the printer driver and nothing to do with API. Windows doesn't know what's in there. It's just between, you know, HP, just entirely within the context of the HP driver or whatever else, or the Canon driver. So... Um, you know, we, what we're exposing in the printer attributes class is basically the most common things that you can usually depend upon and that most applications will want. But, you know, more could be added. I mean, it's possible that, you know, you know this is probably more target. What we've chosen is probably, you know, the ones that I've seen that people tend to use, right? So in, in, Java, in Java X print, we have more of them and they aren't all even used. Okay, oops, duplicate comments. I think that was because I realized those di comments didn't fit on the bottom and I forgot to remove that. Okay. Um, now then there's the, the other, the next class is job settings. Um, so this is the current configuration of the job. Um, and um, pretty much a, you know, I, th I think probably everything that's a printer attribute has a, um, companion um, value or property in the, uh, in the job settings. And there are a couple of others besides. Um, so, you know, trying to be as consistent as possible with, with native APIs and, or native behavior and so forth is the goal. And, um, you know, what you see it populated with is pretty much, you know, what we see when we basically create um, you know, go to that printer and somebody would create a job from that printer and, okay, what are all the default settings for that? Um, just as something of an aside, it's, you know, if you're ever wondering what exactly native behavior is, you know, it's, it's actually really hard to figure out though, because, um, you know, went through an exercise where, you know, looking at things like Word and Notepad and, and Write and so forth, what they do, and if you go and do something like configure your printer to say, okay, the default number of copies for everything, which you can do, is going to be two. I want this printer to always print two copies. So you bring up Write, and it says two. You bring up Notepad, it says one. You know, so you know, there, are, there are many things that you know, applications can override um, just, you know, maybe not even consciously, just in the way they happen to use the, the platform APIs and so forth. So um, you know, we try to accept those printer defaults and things so you get as much of what's supposed to be the way that the system is configured. But, you know, it's not impossible that there'll be wrinkles and things that are like, well, I don't understand. Write does something different than what you're doing in FX. Well, Write probably wrote some, some hard-coded something in there. Um, so, you know, anyway, once the end user starts to modify these or you start to go through platform dialogues and so forth, they end up getting baked into data structures and, you know, it all gets very, very messy in terms of what they, they actually... Um, uh, they are, but we try to reflect back, you know, when you come back from the native dialogue, we'll reflect back what the dialogues say the value is now. You know, so one printer driver might decide to go and hard code something and another not, and, you know, it's to, to a large extent outside of our control. Um, but, you know, um, you know, once it comes back from the, from the user dialogue, so if you display <coughs> called show page setup dialogue, show print dialogue, you know, you can then inspect things in these job settings, right? And you can see, oh, I see it's been changed from portrait to landscape. <sighs> Why did the user do that? No, this has got to be printed in portrait. You can go and slap it straight back and make it portrait again. So you get the final say. That's so, um, you know, if we didn't provide these APIs, you would pretty much have to accept whatever it came back as, you would actually have probably no way to inspect it. You'd have no way to change it. But, you know, because there are job settings, you know, you've got the, and printer attributes, you can do two things. You can find out what are the things that you could use to set up this job. And then you can actually, um, 
you know, enforce the one you want. Even if the dialogue has been displayed afterwards, you can go and set it back. Um, so each of these attributes has basically the usual sort of FX pattern. Uh, there's a get foo method, a set foo pro method, and a foo property method. Foo property. Yeah. Um, so um, something about the philosophy and the sense of the API here. Um, um, job settings it sort of implies is meant. You know, maybe the names don't completely do this, but, but I. You know, they sort of the first one is sort of meant to imply mutability. Those are the way it's currently set up, um, and the attributes were more sort of like, well, this is just how, you know, this printer is, right? Um, you can't sort of add, you can't sort of magically, uh, you know, cause a printer to support, um, you know, a zero paper, right? It's just not going to happen, right? So, um, um, but you know, if if it's available on the list of possible values, then you can certainly put it on the job. Um, so you obtain a printer attributes from a printer, and then you obtain a job settings from a printer job, and it's basic spelling mistake, um, and they're pretty much based on those initial attributes. Now you can't create, so you can't create a job settings, you can't create a printer attributes, right? You, you ask the printer for the printer attributes, and then you ask the job for the, um, the job settings. And I think I have something about the life cycle of those at some point. Um, yeah. So, so those are the same for the life of the print or the job, right? Um, that's particularly important for the job settings. Um, you know, so imagine, you know, you can do something like if you want, you could, you know, you know using FX properties, um, you could listen for a, a value in the change, a, a change in the value of a property. Like you want to know just, you know, if the user did change paper size, right? Um, if basically we said, well, there's a job, and then you can set a job settings object, and then the job settings object can actually have its own properties, which are like the paper and or, or the or the the orientation or something, right? And um, and you were okay. I want to listen to the changes on the on the job on the on the paper or orientation, and somebody installs a new job settings, which is you know, the one that you were listening on, that it, that was. You know, then the job settings that was that held the uh, particular property instance that you'd been listening on is no longer attached to the job. You're wasting your time, right? So the basic idea is that the job settings is created with the job. It sort of lives there. It could almost we could almost have just basically bundled it into the job as being a bunch of the a bunch of attributes on the job, but it was sort of delegated off to a separate object just for to keep the API cleaner and. You, know, you go to that job settings, and then you can see the way the job is configured. Um, you can't um, bind job setting properties to some random application property, um, even though FX, you know, generally, in fact, almost always, you know, does do this. There are a couple of other places in the implementation. Or the API, if you want to put it, that this is also disallowed. Um, so, <clears throat> what this means, is, what I mean by this, is that you, you know, if you had your property, you know, I don't know what you want to call it, my copies or something, and um, you know, you wanted to force the co number of copies of a job to be bound to yours, so that um, you, know, you had control over that, um, that would cause us a real problem because. Um, we, you know, we are going through to some platform native resource, right? We are, um, um, you know, bringing up a native platform dialog, a Windows dialog. The user can say, oh, I want this value, I want that value, whatever. They press OK. And they say, I've set this job up with two copies, a landscape, and I want it in color. And, you know, if you've tried to tie it so that we can't actually have two copies, you know, can't, can't actually change the value of that property value, uh, the value of that property, one of those, um, you know, we're in a bit of a bind. We can't even report to you what the end user requested. So, um, you, if you try to bind it, you'll just get an exception. Um, all right, quick walkthrough, fairly quick walkthrough of the um, um, 
different attributes. Uh, copies is an integer property, very simple. That's just how many um, instances of the job. Um, string job name. This is really just for uses of, for the banner page, typically. Um, we support collation. Um, so you can, if you have more than one copy, they can be collated or uncollated. I'm presuming that, you know, that, that means, you know, page one, page one, page one, page two, page two, page two is uncollated, and page one, two, one, two, one, two is collated. Um, we, you can choose whether you want the printing to come out in gray or color. Quite common if useful if you want to save ink. Whoops, I shouldn't have gone so fast. Um, we'll we'll support you letting you can configure um, you know how many whether you want to print one sided or two sided. Uh, quality, uh, draft low, high, normal. Um, I think there's one resol print resolution should be on here somewhere. Low print quality and resolution very confusingly overlap in many APIs. Yes. I've seen like five levels of print quality on some printers. Is there going to be some way to do that, or would you be stuck with those four? Um, well, here's the thing, right? This is what I was just saying about resolution. Um, and I actually need to uh, um, go and look at what, remember what the actual underlying so platform APIs um, on, on Mac, on, on IPP. I think IPP, I think what we, <clears throat> we support is what IPP supports, right? And I think GDI, right, on Windows has a slightly different range. But then um, when you see print quality on, on some printers, um, particularly on Windows, the way that GDI is actually implemented under the covers, it's kind of weird in that... Um, the um, there are two. There's a the field for um, quality is actually the same as the field for um, uh, either X or Y resolution. And and if the that resolution is negative, it means quality. So you can't actually so you can't actually have quality and resolution on Windows Print GDI at the same time. But also I have seen and I know because I can um, that that the some, you know, um, printer-specific property sheets, they, they, they actually have little settings for resolution and quality, and they're lying. Only one of these really applies, right? Um, but, you know, many cases, they, they, they just want to give users the option, or in some cases, they may actually mean resolution, and they manifest it as, as you know, they actually display it as quality. So there's a bunch of, you know, issues behind that. And, but I, I, I think that you are right in maybe your very initial point in that I think there are five settings actually in the Windows GDI API, but we are only reporting the four IPP ones. Um, and that's something maybe I should think about, but you know, the trouble or the, the reason for it being done like that right now is we are layered on top of the um, Java to D API, which was based on IPP, which just supported those. So. I can't actually, from where I am, see what's in the driver at this point. Um, um, yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, maybe, maybe we should actually add more settings and just sort of like map two of them together, and then, um, um, you know, we can then, you know, have them map one to one later on. It might be better than never being able to map exactly. Yeah, I should think about that. Um, um, paper, very simple, width, height, and a name. Um, many of these classes were enums, you know, nothing you can add to them, right? There's nothing to add to most of them. You could talk about the, <laughs> um, the, the um, quality one, but you know, at an API level, we could add in nine if we wanted to add more, but you know you can't add more. Um, but paper, well, um, paper can't be an enum. You know, we can say, well, there's A4, there's A3, there's A2, whatever, uh, a letter. Um, well, printers have an enormous set of almost. You know, IPP defines gazillion sizes. Um, GDI defines like 30 or 40. Oh, actually, it actually depends which version of Windows you look at. Um, and then printers add their own and so forth. So really, this is an infant number. You um, just need to call get supported papers. 
Um, but we do define, predefine a whole bunch of things like A4 and letter and so forth, just for convenience. So that if you just want to sort of set up your job with, you know, um, with, with, with that, you know what you're talking about. Because if you, the, 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 the downside, right, I guess, of the fact that the printer supports so many different versions is if you, if we didn't provide and just let you say, oh, A4, right, and you're looking for A4, and, and I don't really have a good answer for this. And it, you know, if if we only basically just provided completely custom instances of paper, the only way you'd ever figure out what was A4 was by going through all of the papers, looking for the one that was 297 by 210 or is millimeters. But here we, you know, we provide pr uh, provide a bunch of standard papers. So you can just say A4. <coughs> oh. Duplicate, sorry, yeah, that's got the point on. So I, I'd, I'd like to learn how in PowerPoint to do that nice thing that people do with sort of like adding new lines and bullets, but I haven't actually figured it out. <laughs> it's not good? Yeah, it's horrible. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, um, uh, and the other sort of, I think the only other, oh, Orientation get covered. Yes, orientation got covered. So we also have um, a notion of a of a page range. Very simple, right? Start page, end page, with values starting from one. Um, and there is a page ranges property on the job settings, right? Which is an array of these things. So the idea is that you can actually have multiple ranges. So you could be printing page one to three and seven to seven to ten. OK, um, I probably should have covered this one earlier. And this one's sort of one of the other Im important classes. This isn't a single, an attribute as such, but um, this sort of gets into um, how do you go about um, uh, sort of organizing your content on the page. That's why it's, it's interesting. So a page layout is, is an encapsulation of um, the paper that you're using, um, its orientation, and whatever the margins are. I, I really should stick a, a, it's probably obvious, but I should put a little, I should do a diagram slide, I think. Um, and so within that, the resulting area is what you've got to print on. So if you know, you've got um, A4, actually, I think I have some comments on that in the next slide. But um, basically, anyway, so within that, that you know, piece of paper, you've got the, the margins, and it's within that there's essentially the piece of piece of paper that you're printing on. And anything that's outside of that is is clipped. So it's not the size of the paper that matters to you, it's the size of the printable area. And um, we'll sh come on, to, I have some slides on this somewhere. Maybe it's in the example. Okay. Um, now you can create Funny, I thought it was by now. Okay, you can create your own page layout instance, right? So, and this is obtained from a printer, right? Again, one of the things I think I'll mention later on is that there's a there's a paucity of of new this, new that in the API. Most things you actually get from the implementation for various reasons. So you just say, I want this paper A4 or landscape orientation and margin type default, and there's a predefined um, set of margins. Um, and what we try to do is just sort of make it really easy for you to, you know, configure your paper the way you want. So margin type default, you know, after a bit of thinking about it, you know, decided that about 0.75 of an inch was a sort of reasonable um, default. So if you if you actually typically, you know, don't do anything and just, you know, get a, um, you know, print to a, uh, don't don't even look at the page layout, don't you know, futz with the page layout. Um, you know, you'll get a, a page which has you know three quarters of an inch margins around. We looked at sort of one inch was what was used a long time ago in 2D. It was too big, so ah oh, half an inch. No, that just looks too small. So you know this is just right, <laughs> maybe, it, but it can depend on paper size. So um, and then there were things that were really hard for people to figure out if they wanted to do this in the old APIs. You know, I want to use absolutely as much as possible of the paper. So there are APIs. You know, the the PPDs. And um, and GDR, you know, the, 
so you know, cups, PPDs, and um, as, as you would get on on Linux and macOS, and um, you know, GDI will actually pretty much tell us what is the real you know hardware limitation because most about all printers can't print to to the border, right? So if you just said hardware minimum, you know, we would give you the biggest possible piece of paper. Um, if you say equal, what we're going to do there is say, well, you know, the hardware minimum can be different on different edges. So if it's, you know, we're going to basically try to pick, we'll, we'll basically take the, what's the largest of them and so we can give you a nice uniform thing rather than having your content kind of shifted just that little bit. But, you know, maybe you also really want to, you don't mind that, you, you just want to sort of center it horizontally center it horizontally and center it vertically. So equal opposite. So if it was like, you know, five mil here and eight mil there, you know, it would be eight mil margins. And if it was seven here and six here, it would be seven on the sides. Um, so, you know, we try to make a few of those things pretty easy so you can, you know, and I think those are the, all the common use cases. And if you want something completely random, I haven't shown the variant here, but you can just pass in, you know, four values and it'll, um, you know, use those values as the margins. And, um, you know, the printer validates the request, so you can't ask for negative, mar well, you know, you can't ask for margins which would cause the paper to just not be valid, and you can't, you know, if you ask for a paper that's not supported, we'll just go, and we'll give you the best, you know, it, by some algorithm, you know, a reasonable um, default. I mean, something that's as close as possible to satisfying the request, is how I should have said it. Okay, so page layout, key methods you want to use, uh, get printable width, get printable height. Um, there's a few other methods on, you know, you can query for the margins and whatever else, right, on, on the page layout that you've constructed um, or that was constructed by the implementation. But really, most of the time, all you ever want to do is just go and get the, the, the printable width and printable height. Um, and, and why? Because this basically represents the size of the window you've got to, to, to draw into, right? Um, and, um, you know, it's, it's, you know, try to make it, you know, what seems to be the natural way for you to think about it, right? When we give you the width, we're telling you, you know, what's the width and the orientation of the, you know, that the user has selected. So eight and a half by 11 standard letter paper, you know, is 612 by 792. So if it's in portrait mode, that's what you'll get. But if you switch it to landscape mode, we will report the printable width as being 792 and the printable height as being 612. So you don't have to go saying, oh, what's the, is it in portrait or whatever? No, you just, don't worry. Just, you just get the width, get the height. That's basically what I've got to format my output to. Um, hello. Um, sorry, duplicate again. I need to tidy this up. Um, <clears throat> so, um, you, know, you know, I was just really trying to point out with these last couple of, with this last one line that I added, is that um, the typical, you know, if, if there were, say, one inch margins, right, that would actually reduce the amount of um, uh, the printable width. So it's, you know, you don't just look at the paper size. Remember, it's the um, printable width and printable height that counts. So example, um, uh, get the job settings from the job, then um, from the settings get the page layer. Uh, firewall is off. Sorry. Sorry. Um, uh, you get the page layout um, from um, the settings, and then you get the printable width, printable height, and this example is just trying to show you how you would simply, you know center a, um, um, a circle um, within, the, um, within the page and actually trying to make it be as large as would fit on the page. So um, the, the radius is going to be whichever is the um, uh, lesser value. And um, the, the circle will be centered at half the page width by and half the page height. And so that sort of tells you, you know, it's fairly obvious or self-obvious. Okay, um, <clears throat> so the, um, yeah, something on the, I, I, I've seen 
things on mailing lists. Um, you know, people want, um, uh, you know, think, want to be able to do subclassing a lot, right? Um, and a lot of things are, are final. I mean, I think that's probably more true in the controls and so forth. But um, the, a lot of things in this API are indeed final, in fact. Um, and uh, it doesn't actually make sense to subclass them, <clears throat> um, in my view, anyway. Um, because we're, we're, what we're, not, we're not trying to give you something that you can extend. It just doesn't make any sense to extend it. We're, we're reflecting and giving to you some, something that represents platform properties, right? Um, you can't conjure up a printer. There is no sense in you being able to say new printer. What do you mean new printer? What are, what it, how does, what's that got to do with any printer on the system? Um, so, and you can't, you know, sort of, you know, have it be able to do two-sided if it can't. So the usual pattern is, you know, we, we, you get, you know, you can query all of these and, you know, and we know how to actually map these and create them based on what's in the platform. So, you know, since you can't, you know, you can't subclass print, you know, you can't, you know, you can't create a printer, so, um, you know, subclassing makes no sense. There's so, you know, printer and whatever are final, right? What would, you, what would you do with a subclass? How would you create an instance, right? You can't. So um, all the classes are, are final, unless we ever find a, a good reason to, um, to, to, um, to remove final, which is a compatible thing to do. So final class is hidden constructors. Okay, job lifecycle, um, briefly, um, I hope. So when you create a printer job, you it is um, uh, in the new initial state. You can display and redisplay the dialogues to your heart's content. Um, you can, you know, go off and you know tweak job settings and whatever else, and it all stays like that until you call the first time you call um, print page. At that point, you can no longer do anything. Um, printing is active. You can't call. Um, you can call print uh, page again, right? But you can't, you know, redisplay the user dialogue and change settings. We're already in the middle of the job. Too late. <clears throat> um, the, um, you know, so you know, I wanted that. <clears throat> even if there turn out to be very, very good arguments, you know, to the contrary, maybe at some point, you know, it's that's a better place to be in than sort of trying to work around, well, this used to work. I used to be able to, you know, show the dialogue, print page one, and show the dialogue and change something, and it used to work. And, ooh, okay. Um, I don't want to be dealing with that. So, without having thought it through. So, this is the, the job life cycle. Um, and then the, there are various terminal states. You can actually call explicitly, cancel the job, bail on it so that we know that, that it's done. You can, you know, there could be an error reported, or you, when you successfully call end job, then the job is done. How about suspend or pause? Um, Any questions? How about suspend or pause? Um, no, there isn't. Um, um, but there isn't any, I'm not sure what it would even mean. I mean, once, um, so once you enter print page, we're in the middle of rendering a set of nodes to the printer, right? To 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 the, you know, to whatever represents the the printer graphics, shall we say, um, under the covers, and then we come back and we finish with that page, and then nothing happens until you call print page again. So you know you can essentially put the job into a paused state by not calling anything else. Right, I mean, unless you call end job, it never actually comes out of the printer. I mean, there might be something like, you know, the application gets quit and something, and there are various signals sent, and <coughs> just under the covers, Windows might say, "Oh, I'll spool what's <coughs> what was there or something." But um, your, um, you know, you you would have to, you know, until you call print page, everything's stopped, just waiting. Um, yeah, um, actually one interesting topic which I don't talk about anywhere, and maybe I should, is, you know, there's, you know, you know <clears throat> because this is the scene graph, 
um, model. <clears throat> um, you know, this, this, this is sort of written as an immediate mode kind of a, well, maybe that's not quite the right word. Um, but, you know, in, if anybody who sort of looked at the different Java printing APIs in the past, right? So in, in the first API for JDK 1.0, you basically, you know, would draw to a, a graphics and when you were done, you would dispose it or whatever it was. And it would throw the page. In the Java 2 APIs, um, what would happen is, you know, you would implement a method that, um, an interface that would print a particular page and you would pass that off into the implementation and it would be the thing that would print um, page one or page two or whatever. And, you know, we, because it was a, you know, essentially to us a callback, we could, the implementation could call it as many times as it liked. Um, this, um, you know, has its pluses f for sure, um, but also, you know, was much more difficult for people doing, you know, some kind of, some, um, you know, longer document because the contract as to when we were done with it wasn't clear, right? You know, in fact, the contract didn't even say that, you know, if we print page three and then we print page four, we haven't actually promised we won't come back and ask for page three again. So, um, and the way, but the way this API was done was just try to make it a bit clearer to people that, you know, you can print, you know, you say print this page and when it's returned, that's it. We're done with whatever was on that. We've, we've printed it. We're, we're really done with it. Um, and, um, you know, under the covers, you know, because it's a scene graph though, if we need to, within that page, whilst printing that page, you know, essentially render the scene graph three times, we can. So. Okay, so you can, if you really want to monitor the job status, you can. Um, you can just call the job status, or you can monitor the, the job status property. Um, okay, so um, I wanted to um, kind of just show some basic examples. Um, this point, where is it? <coughs> um, Okay, so, I mean, this is um, not a very pretty application because Jasper didn't write it. I wrote it. Um, I, 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 um, I want to um, pretty up and add a few more little demo kind of things here, but I didn't have time by Java 1, I hope to do so. So all this is showing you, try, well, what this is trying to show you here is um, I should probably could show you the source code in a minute. Um, what um, you know, the kinds of attributes that we see exposed, and all what what this application is doing is you can just pop up a print dialog, and that should be modal with respect to it. But I passed in null. Um, um, I can change to the printer to whatever. I only have one printer physically attached here, but Windows remembers the rest of them. And you know, over, over, I'm kind of covering it up there, but you know, it's got the Canon printer which I got here attached, and you know, that should then just change, right? All it, what, what I was doing here is I just had a listener on the printer property on the job, and um, and also if I you know kind of go in here and I go into the printer properties and I do things like change, uh, you know, set it to be double sided, to be landscape. Uh, grayscale or whatever, all of those things were being recorded over here, um, color and so forth and whatever. These should all um, change. This has changed to actually updating still. Oh, why is it being so slow? Oh, um, the printer isn't physically attached. This, is a, this printer is in my office and so it's actually currently trying to talk to the printer. So that's not working so well. Maybe I should go back to the Canon. I should have to look at why that's hanging, but I, I think that's just sort of a Windowsism, unfortunately, that it tends to hang if the printer isn't available. So if I go here, so just change the, a few of these things. Um, actually, um, actually, this one here might be interesting. See, quality is normal. If I change this to fast, 
I wonder what it'll actually do here. Yeah, you see, and it, well, which one of these will change? It's being slow. Yeah, this printer's powered itself off to save power. It's still having the same problem. do that again since the printer is now on. If this doesn't work it's the uh, demo gods. Yeah so the quality is draft. So I was just curious, I wasn't sure this printer actually really does support quality and not resolution. Anyway so you know there's only one tray on this, but again, you know, if I go off and select something like A5, it should show the paper size here is now A5. So not, you know, very pretty, but I'm just trying to show here that, you know, as as you, you know, as these things are changed by the user, once the user okays the dialogue, all of these things um, update the value in the job. And if you want to listen in on those properties, you can, right? So, you know, you know, it's up to you how to handle it. You can actually just call the you could ignore this entirely if your application doesn't care. You could call the getters or you could just listen in on the, on the properties that you're interested in so that you get called back if the user changes anything rather than you having to, to proactively go out and find the value. Um, okay, what else was I do? Um, some other printing examples. Um, I don't, oh, I probably... I come on to this very shortly, but I think WebView, and I'll show the code. But um, WebView is a bit interesting. Um, yeah, I'm not sizing this thing right, but um, this is, um, you know, just bringing up, um, actually I should really bring up, I thought I had this one configured to bring up a different URL. So this one does seem to generate some nasty exceptions. But, um, um, WebView, this, this is basically WebView just running, um, displaying some Oracle website. <coughs> um, and um, WebView is interesting in that, you know, you, you wouldn't know how to actually go about laying out the content for that. So there's a very, you know, simple method that's been added to, to, to WebView. Um, all you've got to do is basically pass in the printer job to, to WebView's print method and it will draw itself to the printer. Um, this one, you know, this one I think will generate, yeah, I knew this one generates some exceptions, but this then, so, so, add paper, go again, um, I know that java.com was the one that printed out most nicely, but, um, you know, so, you know, I literally, to print out, you know, WebView, you know, the, the code is, you know, basically trivial. So you can print out, you know, any, anytime you want to print out WebView from your, um, from your um, job, you just go ahead and, um, from your application, just go ahead and call this one method. Um, and the way it's actually been implemented, because you call, um, you know, you pass the, 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 um, printer job to WebView, right? It basically internally just, you know, calls print page for each page that the web engine wants to print. And, um, you know, that doesn't, and, and then when, it, when it's done, it doesn't terminate the job or anything, right? So, you know, you know here, what I basically did is I printed, you know, called um, WebView to print itself. And then, you know, just randomly, you know, I threw, I threw another page which just printed a circle, whatever, just anything. So you could embed, you know, it is not a separate job. You can embed that web view printing within the context of a larger job. Um, and one thing we're going to do just to kind of help people, you know, play around with what prints and so forth is, uh, oh, actually I added, see. So uh, there's a print button here that, you know, will be a nicer one, I think, at some point, just added to Ensembler. So I was going to try to find charts. Charts are usually kind of good. Yeah. 
Yeah, we, I need to shrink this down just for now because we're not, the implementation isn't scaling that. And um, if I just press print on that, well, well, what it's basically going to do is print out whatever is the, I, I'm assuming a certain familiarity with Ensemble, which is sort of like the application which demonstrates um, you know, of all the different features of the of UI controls and so forth, and um, you, know, you can just it'll just print that out. So this is very this is, you know we can add you know header and footer to this and so forth to make it more pretty. But you know, if you want to print a chart or anything, it's that easy. You just basically pass the node to to print page, boom, out it comes. Um, if you want to you know. Um, where was that? Graphics. Uh, I don't know. So, you know, we obviously can have effects on um, um, I don't even know what that one is. Okay. Um, so the goal is, right, you know, we have you know, John earlier on, when, before the um, recording was started, was asking about printing 3D, which won't work yet for reasons I'll go into, but hello. I don't know why that got clipped. But basically, um, in theory, you know, this is coming out on the page here um, with, you know, the same shadow effect as we had um, on the screen. So anything that, you know, or anything that you can print, right? Anything that you can draw to the screen eventually should be capable to be printed. And 3D may be the, the one case that just doesn't, that I know will not work right now. Others or cannot work right now. The others are basically bugs. Um, so is there anything that anybody wants to see me try to print just to, out of curiosity? You want to, I don't know what's, I mean. How about a um, um, canvas? Ah, damn you. <laughs> um, I'm actually I've got a fix, but Canvas um, um, doesn't work right now. We we there's an exception thrown. I was trying to fix that um, last Thursday, and then I got this email that said apparently I had to give a talk on Wednesday, oh. and, <laughs> and <laughs> I didn't quite get around to fixing it. So. Um, yeah, I, I know Canvas will um, throw an exception. I mean, I could prove it to you. That's a good prep for your job one section. You get the same question. <laughs> yeah, there you go. It's gonna. Yeah, there's some exception there. I don't even know. I don't know why this one is actually. I don't think it was supposed to spit out all of that stuff unless there was a. Um, um, so it was a debug build. Never mind. Anyway, let's hope I haven't completely hosed Ensemble there. Um, but you know, the UI controls, if you want to print a, um, damn it, I meant um, table. I don't know if the table in here is all that pretty, to be honest, but um, why is it clipped? Right. Why is Ensemble doing that? Okay, we'll just see what happens. So I've got a little portable printer here because the um, 60 pound behemoth in my office was not going to come with me. So, um, so you know, basically all I do there is I just get, ask it Ensemble to print. I mean, literally all we're doing, all that's been done to Ensemble at this point here is just trivially just, you know, it's printing whatever is this um, group node here. Um, or region. Print to an image. Um, can, oh, can I print images at full resolution? Is that what you meant? Um, there's no... Um, that would be more, um, there's no way to do that, no, is the short answer. Um, the, um, the, if we were to do something like that. Um, 
Um, well, yeah. I mean, you know, that would be more like, um, you know, that, would, that would, might be something that's done kind of outside of printing, really. Um, because all you really need to do, yeah, it's something like canvas and then just snapshot of it. So it's, that's sort of outside of printing. But, um, rendering to canvas. Yeah. Yeah, but um, you know what I th thought you would be asking was about how we would print images, and um, you know certainly there are things. You know, if you gave us like a very, I, I, I tried this many months ago, and um, to prove that it worked, you know, you can go out and get a really, really high resolution, you know, twelve thousand by ten thousand pixel image or something, and, and print it through this API, and it prints at you know full resolution, so we don't pixelate it or anything. Um, Okay, um, let me try to wrap up. I'm not really done yet, but yeah. So that was the um, WebView um, slide. Um, so you know the basic, you know the basic method you want to look for. Is, or the only method you really need to know about is this: WebView, Get Engine, Print, and then um, with a um, well, this is actually a mixture of API and. Def declaration and, and actually usage. I should clean that up. But um, basically, you, you pass in the job to its print method. Um, so you set up the job, pass it to the web engine. It prints as many pages as it, as it needs. It seems to have problems right now with margins, but I think there was a bug on that. And then you know it just returns control to you. And I th don't know if I actually wrap that up into a full example, but no, I, I meant to, but I didn't get around to it. Um, so, okay, so pretty much everything, you know, I think the real points I was trying to get over there is just that, you know, any, any, you know, everything in FX is one way or another, um, a node and, you know, you can, you can print, um, you know, you, as many node, any node you want and you can print any, you know, when that can be a node hierarchy. So you just lay out the nodes the way you want, you pass it to print page and out it comes. Um, yeah, um, so this was something I touched on earlier on. Um, you know, there are two, you know, important threads in, in, in JavaFX, the FX application thread and the FX rendering thread, called the prism thread usually, colloquially. Um, um, you know, you're supposed to do everything on the application thread and we do the printing on the on the backend thread, and so there are you know rules about you know you can't even you can if you do a stack trace dump sorry you can see this but pretty much you're trying you're supposed to do everything on this thread, on the F application thread once you've attached stuff to a scene, and you know stuff can only get painted and drawn when it's attached to the scene, um, and I was going to say slide, so um, I think my real point there was. Not really be being made, but um, in you know in and that, that's 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 basically how FX works normally. But in printing, you know, you know we we're um, you know trying to make it so that you know obviously you still don't see this, but you don't have to worry so much about the FX application thread. You can you know kick off printing on the thread if you want, or you can call print a job, create a print job, and show print to page dialog from any thread you want, um, and. Um, you know, you can, you don't have to, you know, you don't have to add your node to a, a scene, right? So you can do whatever you want with it, right? Um, and we can print that thing off, off on any thread you want. So you don't have to be, you know, it could be just literally running in the background on another, on another thread and while your application continues to do its normal stuff. Because printing is a fairly long lived operation. I seem to have lost some slides here. I don't know where they went. Um, so, you know, that's basically talking about the rendering thread. Okay, um, I think I need to revise these slides a bit. Okay, so one note is, you know, don't, you know, don't animate um, anything that you're, you're rendering. I did actually have a, in fact, one of the things that I could have shown in that, um, I had a copy of it somewhere. In, in an ensemble. So, I mean, there was some animation, and you know, this is sort of, you know, I doubt anybody will be able to s 
see it very clearly, but you know, this, this was in, in some kind of ball, bouncing ball or whatever, animation. And when I try to print that, you know, you know, you can see this sort of cut off and there's, well, you guys probably can't see, but there's like a jaggy here and so forth. Because, you know, um, when we go to print, right, it's, and you're animating, it's whatever, we get whatever the state happens to be at that moment. And if it spans um, multiple frames, um, because we, we call back to print, you know, the second part of, you know, you know, we may actually try to print that several times just to actually complete the page, then, you know, it's somewhat potluck what you'll get. So, you know, it should be, you know, common sense, you know, you know, you can't, you know, you, you know, you can't print um, a media view that's displaying a, a movie, right? I mean, we're not going to give you 100,000 pages, one for each frame. Well, yeah, the flip with KPI, you know. Yeah, um, the paper manufacturers would love you, but yeah. Um, okay, so that was most about everything I wanted to say. Um, <clears throat> so this slide's a bit busy and doesn't have everything on that I know I meant to add, so I'll have to adjust it. But um, one thing that was um, <coughs> touched on earlier on is uh, the way that we did this for FX8 was we built on top of the um, Java 2D printing implementation. So the API exposes absolutely nothing of it. And you know, there's no you know, hard dependency um, until, you actually, until you start to use it. But you know, under the covers, we, we call through to um, the, what was the Java 2D pipeline, which was the non-accelerated pipeline we used in FX2. And it's still there in FX8, but it's not, um, it's not used for, for desktop usage anymore. But you know, printing calls through to it, and, you know, and that's where we're getting our dialogues and, and um, where we're we getting um, you know, the, the underlying printing implementation for each platform, which talks through to GDI and so forth. Um, and um, you know, that is obviously a, you know, was, it, was a good thing, well, maybe it's not obvious to you, but it was, for us it was obviously a good thing because we didn't have to go and write all these different platform implementations. And you know, each one of these is like, like I was saying off camera, it's like writing a pipeline. So you know, we might have a Direct3D pipeline and OpenGL ES2 pipeline, we might have a software pipeline. You know, and a lot of effort goes into writing each of these pipelines. And um, you know, printing would you know, need to support you know, in its native director native implementation, you know, everything that we would do through D3D and all the effort that goes into that. So for, for this release, basically, it's based on, on, on 2D. So in JDK, when you have um, profiles, and you can have the core profile and the, I forget what they call them all, but you know, there's, a, there's a desktop profile as well, um, which basically brings in you know, AWT, 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 Swing, and 2D. You know, you would have to be running on top of that profile. Um, but you know, that's, um, you know, I don't think a big deal if you want to do printing. Um, because you know, generally speaking, you know, it's the more enterprise type of app. Um, so you know, there are some minuses. You know, we're having to maintain that 2D pipeline. And you know, some of the, the bugs, if anyone was to go out and try this, you, would, if you, you can still force the 2D pipeline on screen and you know, code rot, right? It's not being used on screen anymore. And people have done stuff and not checked that it still works with the 2D pipeline. So you bring it up on screen and we've, you say it doesn't work. So when you go to, you know, some output is missing. So, mm, you know, f eight times out of 10, if you see something not right in the rendering to the printer, it's, you try to draw the same thing to the screen with the 2D pipeline, it looks the same, oops. Um, so that's one particular battle I'm fighting. Um, so I want to get, you know, in, 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 in nine we'll get past that, but it requires a lot of work to do these native pipelines. Um, and, um, you know, then the other question is what do we actually generate, right? You know, so on, on Windows, um, you know, we've been using GDI, um, but, you know, we only support Vista and above, and in JDK 9 we may not even support Vista, I don't know what the time uh, we probably have to, but anyway. Um, but you know, there there are newer Microsoft printing APIs which we could try to adopt if they don't, you know, if they fit in with what we need to do, and that would you know give us um, 
more power potentially than we get with GDI. And then, you know, what do we do on the other platforms? I, I really haven't quite figured out what the best thing to do is. You know, we could, you know, people um, you know, have talked about the ability to just directly generate PDF. And, you know, PDF is a perfectly fine spool format for, um, for, for um, you know, for Mac OS and, and, and Linux. Um, so maybe we would actually implement this as, you know, essentially just a PDF pipeline. I don't know. I'd be interested in thoughts on that. The extra profile required, does that mean I cannot write a mobile app and send it to a wireless printer? Um, well, um, we don't have a mobile platform at this point. <laughs> um, there are, um, you know, sort of open source people working on, um, you know, we, there are, there are, the, the code is out there, but it's, you know, the people are still working on the ports. But, you know, that's something which we would have to add in to that port, right? Um, you know, so, but, you know, what are the definite goals for, you know, I think committed product goals, but, you know, always the disclaimers, right, from Oracle, right? Um, you know, is, is, you know, um, we have um, um, FX running on what we call the embedded platform, right? Um, which is sort of Linux on ARM and so forth, um, and other similar devices. You know, that will require printing support in JDK 9, right? So that's not, that's not Android and that's not iOS, right? But, um, you know, we, we will have, you know, something that works on, on those devices. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, I also did a long time ago, at least for iOS, you know, just take a look at what the APIs looked like for printing. And it didn't seem like we were doing anything which would cause a problem in just making this fit into the API. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, one thing that's missing from this slide, which I remembered while I was driving, I think. Um, uh, although I forget exactly how it's configured, but um, CSS lets you explicitly say that this is the, um, you can have different CSS style sheets for, for, for on-screen and printing, right? And one of the things we want to um, try to do is, you know, if, the, if you're displaying off-screen some, something which, you know, some controls or whatever where CSS applies, you know, we would actually apply the printing for printing CSS you know, and that might say, that would be, you know, so rather than having like this, you know, gray gradient or something else, for as a background, it just would have a white background, you know, something that's more sensible for printing. Um, okay, I think that wraps it. Um, any questions? Yeah. Um, oh, so I mentioned print color. Yeah, is that the one? No, that's. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he, there was a, an API slide so far back. I won't try to find it, but I think I know what we're talking about, um, where it, it mentions print color and um, what does that print color mean. All it means is that printers, um, you know, color printers, right? This was printed out, you know, on a color printer, right? But you can put that color printer into grayscale mode. And, you know, people will do that for whatever reason, like, you know, they want to save their expensive color ink or something, right? But, you know, almost well, all color printers, right? All, you know, at least in on Mac OS and, and, and you know, um, Windows, right, they will, the drivers, right, support, if they support color, they also support a monochrome or grayscale mode. And it just toggles between those two modes. Yeah, so it's not color space. No, no, it's nothing to do with color space. I see. Yeah, no. Um, there are, um, I think there are some um, Windows APIs and that I've, you know, for, um, specifying particular color profiles to use with print jobs, that, um, but we, we don't expose anything to do with that. Um, yeah. 
you know, we'd have to, that would be an interesting one to explore, but probably wouldn't, you know, there are probably um, other things to do first. Okay, that's fine. My, my cell phone's dead. What? One more question. Okay, go ahead. Um, so, um, a long time ago when I was playing around with the 1.1 1 .1 printing, um, one of the things I found really difficult was to write and partition things into pages. Um, maybe I'm not that bright. But, um, but it's still, if you're dealing with nodes, it's still the same issue. Like, is there some type of framework to figure out, like, okay, I want to. This to go on this page, this to go on this page. It's, um, yeah. So um, uh, the question I was um, saying that in, you know, in the old APIs 1.1 1, 1 and so forth, he would fight how to actually get stuff onto, figure out what had to go on what page, you know, how to do pagination. Um, is there some framework for that in the new API? Um, yeah, short answer is, no, but I really need to um, post or write some examples which actually show about how you go about doing this kind of thing for, for typical, you know, cases. Um, uh, the, um, I mean, that's one of the reasons, though, why, um, you know, WebView has its own print method, right? With all of the other nodes, you at least have a chance, right? Because you know what what, what they're there. You, you're in control. You put this node here, you can set the size and the content and you know, lay it out and so forth. With, with WebView, right, you, there's, you know, you have a URL. I mean, you know, and then WebView goes and renders whatever is at that URL and it's whatever it is, right? You don't know how wide it is, how long it is. You have no idea where you would split it. So the only thing that's possible to do is hand off to Web Engine to actually do the pagination for that. In the same way that, you know, WebKit under the covers will do that, um, you know, if you're running Safari, right? Um, but, you know, for general, um, you know, uh, I have some, con I want to flow my content and have it flow across pages and be broken up into pages. Um, you know, you, um, I have, you know, I've, you know, given, um, I think a chunk of one Java One talk I'm just remembering, like six, seven years ago, eight years ago, I gave, was showing, was trying to actually show how you go off and do this for um, something like um, um, JTable. What was it JTable? And it was, you know, such a pain. I, you know, I, I had it working and it, it worked. And it was, you know, various other people had tried it too. And, you know, I probably knew enough about the way things work that I made as good a job of it as anybody else did. But, you know, in the end, we actually put a method on JTable for it to print, right? <laughs> because, you know, you didn't want people to have to do that. So, so, so the, the kinds of content that um, really are, you know, going to flow across pages like tables and things like this, are like WebView, we have talked about, you know, providing some kind of easy way of doing it. Um, not, you know, I think there's some mixed views as to whether we should or shouldn't do that. I mean, I, th I think, you know, printing something like J the tables, right? Um, I think Rich's view is that that's kind of the reporting package world, right? We, sh you know, you they shouldn't even be doing it this way. They should go off and do something completely different, right? And you, you know, you basically go off and you get your rows of data and, you know, you just print those rows of data one at a time. And, and you know, it's not really hard to, you know, realize that, okay, I've now got 20 rows on this page. Okay, got to go to the next one, right? Um, but, you know, then there are at least, you know, the one thing that I really want to try to put out an example for, and, but I think, you know, really could still need um, some kind of helper is, you know, text and probably text flow as well. Uh, because, you know, text is a, you know, it's really hard for you to measure it again. It's sort of, it's not as bad as WebView, but it's really hard. You know, the, the way if I, I actually wanted to finish um, an example which showed how you could do this and put it in a couple of columns and so forth. Maybe I can do that by Java 1 or something, but you know, some of these are definitely still really hard. So it's not exactly um, the answer you wanted to hear, but yeah, they, you know, they, well, yeah, okay, here's the bit you want to hear. No, you're not stupid. This is actually, <laughs> it is actually quite hard. Um, 
but I would like to sort of provide some examples which show, you know, how you would go about doing this for, and, you know, if, if as time goes on, we say, well, you know, some of these things which, f you know, just naturally flow are too hard, we could provide, you know, some kind of um, uh, helper API to do that for you. But at the moment, I don't have anything there other than you just laying it out yourself. But excellent question. Touched on something that I wanted to add slides on, but I didn't want to do it without my backup example. <laughs> okay, so any other questions in the room? All right, thanks very much, Phil, for your presentation. Okay, thank you.